Hello and welcome back to Data Visualization using Python. In today's video, the first of Section 5, we're going to begin taking a look at Seaborn. In Section 5, we're going to see how to theme Seaborn, a tool for doing statistical plotting, how to use some of the powerful built-in tools that Seaborn provides, the automatic plot generating features that Seaborn has for you, and finally, we'll make a brief introduction to BaseMap, Matplotlib's geographic plotting tool. In today's video, we're going to start, though, by looking at the Seaborn package. Seaborn is a powerful tool for doing statistical plots, that is, plots of distributions and relationships between data. In today's video, we're going to see some of the distribution plotting tools that Seaborn provides, the 2D and joint distribution tools that Seaborn provides, and finally, some of the cool automatic theming features that Seaborn has built in for you. Let's dive right in. So we're going to begin, as usual, by importing NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, but now we're also going to be importing Seaborn, and we'll import it as SNS. So if we do that and inline our Matplotlib, and load up using Pandas, are data from Fandango looking at movie ratings. We're going to be using that for today's video. Well, Seaborn provides a number of different tools for looking at distributions. So let's begin by making what in base map plotlib we would build out of a histogram using Seaborn's dist plot. So if we do SNS dot dist plot here, we can provide one of the data points that our Fandango data provides. So let's take a look at the normalized Rotten Tomatoes ratings. So if I do that, you can see that on top of what we would get from the built-in histogram that Pandas would provide, we also get this curve. And on top of the basic histogram that Matplotlib provides, we automatically label things. Now this curve here that goes along with our histogram is called a kernel density estimator. It works by smoothing out the data to provide an estimate of the continuous distribution when we only have a number of individual discrete points. So we can get just this kernel density estimate rather than that on top of the histogram by using the KDE plot method. And there you can see we get just that curve. We can also pass options to this to change the way it appears. So for example, we can shade the inside of our KDE. We can also do kernel density estimates in two dimensions. So for example, if I had done a scatter plot of Rotten Tomatoes user ratings and my Rotten Tomatoes critic ratings, you can see, well, what that looks like. And by looking at that, you probably would be able to tell that there are some relationships involved in the data. But the details of that relationships are not exactly clear when dealing with just a scatter plot. So if I do a scatter plot of my user ratings and my critic ratings, you can see they're sort of linear relationship, but your eye isn't great at determining the density of these points. So using instead KDE plot, we can actually automatically determine the density using these points. So using KDE plot here, same call structure, you can see we actually get these contours going to higher and higher density. And if we fill them in, then you can see, in addition to this linear relationship, we have most of our points here lying between about four and five. So this tells us not only that there's a linear relationship between the user and critic rating, but that most of the movies get a rating around four and a half for both users and critics. Now, there's an even more sophisticated tool that we can use to plot two-dimensional data like this called the joint plot. And the joint plot provides automatically a number of different bits of data all together in one figure. 
So this joint plot takes a slightly different call structure. So we actually pass an X and Y argument here as strings. These are the keys in our pandas object. And we also pass a data object. That data is the pandas object itself. So let's take a look at right now a hex bin joint plot. What we get with this hex bin is a splitting up, similar to this 2D histogram, into a tile of hexagon. But on top of that, we get an automatic correlation coefficient, this Pearson's R, as well as the probability that that correlation is random, and a pair of histograms automatically generated for us. We can also use a KDE and provide an even more visually attractive sort of joint plot. So if we do a KDE here instead of a hex, we'll get a kernel density estimate. And there you can see we have that 2D kernel density estimate, but then also the histograms for each of these separate data points. One of the neat things that Seaborn provides for you is you can actually control the themes as well automatically with very simple style options. So Seaborn provides a number of different built-in styles, but just to give you an example of a couple of them, here is white, which gives you kind of very smooth, simple background. And it becomes very clean if we set the shading to be false. You can also add a grid, automatically applies little grid spines to make this a bit clearer. You can make it dark with a grid. And there you can see we have a grayed out background. And you can also add and remove ticks. So adding these ticks here, kind of a shortened background grid. We can also turn on and off the spines. That is these extra bits of chart junk, as it might be called. So if you want a very, very clean plot, you can set a white style and then actually disable the spines. So Seaborn provides a despine method. You can turn off the leftmost spine. And if we do that, you can see I've removed these spines here and I can remove my bottom spines as well. So if you want to produce a very clean, sort of minimalistic style, Seaborn has a lot of features to automatically do that for you. So if you want to still have some ability to see, you can turn that grid back on. So there's quite a bit of built-in theming options, and most of these defaults are quite smart. You're not gonna get something that's hard to look at or ugly on the eyes. On top of the theming, Seaborn also provides the ability to automatically scale the font and marker size. So if you change rather than the style, the context, so let's set a style of white grid and change our context. So let's give the wrong one so it'll show us what our options are. Paper, notebook, talk, and poster. So the default is paper. But I can also use notebook, which gives me slightly cleaner look here. Or if I want very large fonts for, say, a talk, I can use talk. It'll blow things up, make it more visible for people in the back of the audience. And if you want exceptionally large markers for a poster that you might be printing off, it'll automatically scale everything for you. So you don't need to go in and change the fonts for every single piece of chart features that you want. You don't have to then also change the line width. All of that is automatically done for you by this context.